What is up people, this is Varis HQ and in this video, I'll be showing you how to use your Arduino as a volume controller and as an additional keypad or a custom keypad. So for this project, what you'll need is a USB compatible Arduino. So what this means is that the Arduino needs to have a USB host on itself and like these are the boards which actually have it on them and the one I'm using is the Arduino Pro Micro and what additional things you'll need is an encoder and a couple push buttons so this is the wiring diagram that i've followed and these are the pins that i've connected next let's look at the code so now if you look at the code the first part is for the rotary encoder and this remains the same as i showed in the last video and you can check that video out up in the corner or it's linked in the description as well next we import the library known as hid-project.h the way to install this library is you just go to sketch include library uh, manage library and then just search for hid project and install it next we define the keys these are the pins which the buttons are connected to. Next, we define a few variables which are keypad status, timeout, up, down array, side array equal to zero and main volume equal to one. Now these three variables are for a special function that, that I wrote up and I'll show it to you in a bit. Next, in the setup loop, we just set the serial rate at 115,200 baud and then this line over here is for the rotary encoder so r dot set changed handler in brackets rotate next what we do over here is we are setting the pins up so we set the pin mode to input and we write uh and we write it to high but since i don't want to write it nine times what i just do is i just give, i just add it in a for loop and it does it and the last line consumer.begin this is to start using the library hid project next in the void main loop r dot loop this will go through the rotation part and if it detects a rotation what it'll do is it'll come to this part over here and it would check if if the if the encoder is moved clockwise or anti-clockwise and depending on it, it would select which way it's going to go. If it's going in the clockwise direction, the media volume would go up or the right arrow click key would be clicked or the key down arrow would be sent to the computer. The same thing for the other part. If it goes counterclockwise, either the media volume down command is sent or the left arrow key is sent or the up arrow key is sent. And just adding keyboard keyboard.release all it stops sending that command because this is from the keyboard.h library next we check if the if any of the buttons are pressed so keypad status is going to be equal to get keypad status and we call in this definition over here and what happens over here is it just sets the keypad status to zero which is the by default value that is supposed to be sent next we initialize the inputs with pull-ups and stuff so it's kind of like the same loop but over here now what you're trying to do is we are going to be reading it and and if the key value is anything but zero then it sends the keypad status up to the main loop which is over here and if it, and this value will be anything in between 1 to 256 because that's the value of the int it goes from 0 to 256 next we come over here if the keypad status is not equal to 0 which means that some value was detected it would it would it would go to the switch case which is send key press keypad status and it would come to this switch case so what happens over here is i just i've just defined different cases so 1 2 4 8 8 16 32 64 128 and 256 and each button has its own functionality so if it's case one that belongs to the push button that's 
actually on the encoder so what it will do is it will send the command media volume mute and this mute it would mute the system's volume case 2 is going to be the first button which is going to be a copy button so left control plus c so we so we send in two key presses one key press is key left control the second press is key c and then we release it so it just copies it once then i just gave it a short delay because of because i was running into an issue of coasting and i probably think it's because of me not soldering the cables or uh, me not soldering the whole board up same thing goes for control v which is case 4 so left control plus v control x so cut left control plus key x next for the arrow keys i just sent in key right arrow which is going to be the right arrow key up arrow which is going to be left arrow key down arrow which is going to be the down arrow key and so on and 256 this is for a special key that i've defined and this is like the toggle switch that i'm using so what happens over here is by default the encoder it's supposed to just manipulate the volume but in case if i want to have it do another function like use the left and right arrow keys or use the up and down arrow keys then i just click that button and it toggles the state from the volume to the up down arrow key to the side arrow keys and that's exactly what was defined over here next the timeout is set to 2000 then we go to the while loop and if the keypad status is still the same it would and the timeout is still not equal to zero then it would then it would lower the timeout value by one and run it through a 400 millisecond delay but if the get keypad status is equal is still equal to the keypad status what would happen is it would go to the infinite loop where it sends the key press and it's and it adds a 250 millisecond delay and it will keep on sending this key over and over with a delay of 250 milliseconds this loop is to make sure that we give the user enough time to depress the switch but if the switch is still pressed then and only then would it go to this loop so that's about it for for this code if you if you want to know more about what commands to use for which buttons then it's defined in your libraries folder so it's probably going to be like documents arduino libraries hid project then you go into the src folder hid apis and consumer api.h now this folder contains other dot h other dot H files as well you, you can go through them as well and they're gonna have different functions as well and like you can you can call all of them in the same manner if you just scroll down over here you know all the keys and all the functions that you can use so if you want to turn the brightness up and down you'll just use these two if you want to turn if you want to trigger the screensaver or anything else this is the library that's that you're going to be using now let's just compile it and flash it on the on the arduino so i just go to tools i just go to the boards and it's and it's there by default so arduino Gino micro we just click that we select the correct com port and we flash it but since i already have it flashed i won't flash it i'm going to show you what it does we just click on serial monitor and there's the serial monitor now if you look at the video i'm turning the volume uh, i'm turning the encoder in the clockwise action so the volumes going up and the serial monitor is showing that the volume keys uh, that the volume is going up if i turn it anti-clockwise it's going down if i click on it it mutes and unmutes it but now if i hit the toggle switch it just shows 256 and now if i if i turn it clockwise then it goes down anti-clockwise it goes up if I hit the toggle switch again, it just changes it to left, right, and left arrow keys for clockwise and anti-clockwise. And if I hit the first button, it's going to send control C. Same for control V, control X, the left arrow key, the down key, the right arrow key, and the up arrow key. 
So that's it for this video. What you can do furthermore is make it into a PCB, solder it on, make a 3D printed case and enclose it all and make it more suitable for everyday use. But since I don't have access to a 3D printer, I just can't do it right now. And there are a lot of use cases for this. So you might have seen streamers use the stream deck and stuff. So you, so you could just program this to do that stuff. The only thing you would need to do extra is you would need to manually set up your macro keys in the streaming software that you use. So thank you people for watching this video. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel, ding dong that notification bell and sorry for being so inconsistent with my videos and I hope to see you in my next video.